This tutorial is intended to demonstrate how you can use Control-M application workflow orchestration to manage complex and sophisticated applications that run in Kubernetes as well as in traditional environments and how to be able to manage the entire end-to-end -end processing in a seamless manner. We're going to do that by looking at a specific use case. We are dealing with a financial services organization that has as a business goal the desire to grow their wealth management portfolio business. They believe that many of their customers and potential customers are active on social media and by watching what such individuals say in those forums, they will be able to more effectively target existing customers and give them better service, identify potential new customers, and to improve their own internal operations by finding related individuals that today they are managing as separate accounts. In order to achieve this, they will use the following collection of technology. Starting from the left, their plan is to collect tweets and look for ones that have geolocation data in them. Using that geolocation data, they plan to link up the Twitter activity to their internal customer information. In order to do that, they are using geolocation data. In our example, we will be using the open address data provided and available on Kaggle.com. Additionally, their internal information from their CRM and other systems of record will allow them to connect or link the Twitter activity to information that they have about customers. The components that will analyze and sync up their Twitter data to their internal information are going to be running in a Kubernetes cluster. They have a set of application components or services that are pulling Twitter data using Twitter API. Information that is the tweets that are eligible are then published to a Kafka topic. Another set of services running in the Kubernetes cluster will be consuming the information published by the first application by scribing to a Kafka topic. When eligible information is discovered, there will be a lookup done to match the geolocation data to see if we can identify whether that tweet is coming from a customer. Once a potential individual is identified, we will then undertake either to push personalized offers to that person. If we notice that there is either complaints or kinds or service issues, customer support will reach out to them. And if it happens to be either individuals that we already know but treat independently, or if we find new individuals that we do not know about but that live or seem to be residing at the same address as existing customers, we can then bundle them together and treat the entire collection of individuals more efficiently as a family unit where we can push additional services or make more personalized and more effective offers as a group rather than as individuals. Control-M is going to be involved in managing these processes where you see the little icon of the Control-M man. In the case of geolocation data, that lands in an S3 bucket on occasion. And Control-M watches that bucket, and when the data arrives, it loads it into Snowflake. Snowflake is being used as our data lake to combine all of the information that we have, both from incoming data, which is geolocation and Twitter data, as well as extracts from our existing systems of record. And those extracts are going to be pulled by Control-M as well. The services running in a Kubernetes cluster are also going to be managed by Control-M. And we want to ensure we do that for a few reasons. First of all, this application is, although important, not as important or not as mission critical as other applications already running in the Kubernetes cluster. We want to ensure that we manage the resource utilization of the cluster from a business perspective rather than simply from a resource and compute and memory perspective. And so Control-M can add that view because Control-M understands business cycles, business priorities, 
and it can either throttle or open up the aperture to allow us to run more or less work in the Kubernetes cluster, thus consuming either more or less or fewer resources, depending on business priorities. Additionally, there are some rules that we want to follow in terms of standards and identifying the workload. And from a Kubernetes perspective, if you're running Kubernetes jobs, the same job names cannot run simultaneously. And so if we're already running a particular job or set of jobs, we want to make sure that we don't make any attempt to run another set and have them fail. Again, this is something that Control-M can do very easily. Let's now look at the environment in which our application is running. We have a Linux machine that is our Kubernetes cluster. It is both the master and the node. Let's look at some of the cluster characteristics. This particular node has a label that will ensure that Control-M agent will be running on this machine, as we'll see momentarily. We're running Kubernetes version 1.14, and we're using container D as our container runtime. There are no jobs running, or no Kubernetes jobs, and the only pod that is running is from our Control-M agent. This agent is running as a daemon set. You can see here the node selector for this daemon set, which will ensure that we have an agent instance running on this same node as we saw previously. This daemon set is using a service account. We'll see momentarily how we create that, but this account will grant the Control-M agent the right to access the Kubernetes API and to operate on job object. We can see the image that is being run, the port that is being used for Control-M agent to communicate with the Control-M server infrastructure, and some of the environment variables that tell the agent where to connect to. Keep in mind that when Kubernetes starts this daemon set pod, it will make available to it the credentials that are necessary to connect to the Kubernetes API and to perform operations on the objects to which this particular pod should be granted permissions. Now let's take a quick look at the Control-M infrastructure. This is the Control-M web application that we will be using to monitor the jobs that we are running. And these are the jobs that we're going to submit. These are all of the jobs that make up the workflow that we saw earlier when we talked about the architecture for our application. So you can see that there's a Snowflake job. Here's an MFT job that will watch the S3 bucket for arrival of the geolocation data. And here are some jobs that will run the services that both publish and subscribe to Kafka topics, pulling from Twitter, looking up information in our Snowflake data lake and determining whether a tweet is identifying a potential customer or a requirement for a service call. We'll now use the functionality we, we describe as Automation API to submit these jobs. We are running a Node.js CLI that implements the REST APIs that expose Control-M functionality. The result of this operation will be a bunch of jobs that will appear and will run the application components we've described. We can see those jobs here within the context of all the other work that is running, or I've created a filter so that we can look at those jobs on their own. And this is the entire application and all of the components that we talked about earlier that make up our customer 360 and sentiment analysis application. We can see that a couple of jobs are running and no more than a couple because we are using Control-M resource management to ensure that no more than a few of the jobs as determined by business priorities are going to execute in our cluster. If we pop over to the Kubernetes cluster now, we can see that there are a couple of jobs that are running. We currently have one job running that's producing or publishing to Kafka, and we have one that is consuming. The others, and you can see the status by color, are waiting for resources indicated by blue. If a job is green, that means that it's completed successfully. If it's yellow, it means it's executing. In this case, the pink means waiting user confirmation. And I've done that just to slow this down for the purposes of the demo, allowing me to determine when we want to start watching the S3 bucket for the arrival 
of our geolocation data. This producer, which is one of the jobs that pulls tweets from Twitter and pushes them to a Kafka topic, will run pretty much forever. In order for us to see what this output looks like and how we can interact with it, I am going to kill it now so that it will terminate, allowing some other job to run and take its resource slot in effect, but will also let me look at the output and what that output looks like. So you can see that this is the result of publishing to the topic called tweets that will be consumed by some of these Kafka consumer jobs. I have started the Kubernetes job and of course in Kubernetes a job object re results in a pod being started. The information that you see here in the output is the log for that pod and when I kill this job I have now killed or terminated or in Kubernetes terminology deleted the job and also deleted the pod related to that job. Now we've spent a little bit of time looking at the details and what's going on in a Kubernetes environment but really if you're running workflow you shouldn't really care. The whole idea of Control M is that you can see your workflows which make up your business process and the fact that they happen to run on Kubernetes or in this case on watching an S3 bucket or running a snowflake operation are really only required either for technicians or perhaps in the case of a problem that needs to be diagnosed. Otherwise, we really elevate our view and we are looking at only the job objects or the components of our application that enable us to deliver the business process that we require to implement, in this case, Customer 360 and sentiment analysis.